All right, if you all turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and we'll look at verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And then he opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of My Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Alright, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father Yeshua, I just come to you this afternoon and I pray I pray for that power from on high. I pray what you've endued unto your apostles and your disciples back almost 2,000 years ago that you continue, Jehovah, to pour out your Holy Spirit, your Ruach Hodesh, Jehovah, upon those saints, Jehovah, that have called upon your name, that have truly repented, Jehovah, and that have confessed their sins and put their faith and trust in thee. And I pray... For those here listening, Jehovah, I pray for myself. I pray for each one of us that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. I pray you bless this time of fellowship and bless this message. I pray you use it for your honor and your glory, Yeshua Mashiach, I pray. So be it. Amen. So this verse is, um, we read this last Sabbath and a couple other times, and it seems like whenever, when I started this I guess call it a series. I went towards the foundation of our faith. And I know Brother Matt and Brother Steve, they've been listening to it, you know, what I've been going on. And I'll tell you the truth, I don't know where the Holy Spirit's been taking me week after week. You asked me to come today, I don't have a message. All right, I did have a message. When you ask me, I just wait upon Yeshua. All right. And if I tell you some things, it'd be be hard to believe, all right, that I don't go off and study, like dig into books and all that. I just let the Holy Spirit just give me what He's going to give me. And what I'm going to share with you today, it was just like a thought, because I was praying, it was Wednesday night, I'm like, I don't have a message yet. And I'm like, usually I I get up on uh, Sabbath, the Saturday, like today, and I just go in my room before I start, just like you guys are gathered together, and I'll just go and shut the door, and I've learned to just trust in Yeshua, just uh, pick up my pen, and it all comes, all right? And today, it's something that the Holy Spirit gave Wednesday night, just a few thoughts, but again, He gives me the verses in the Scripture. So Luke 24, I want to bring your attention, it says, and that repentance and it says in verse 49 it says and behold I send the promise of my father listen to that word he says upon you right my promise of my father is upon you upon up up means higher than you all right it's upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem or Jerusalem a specific place, all right? Yeshua doesn't waste words. Every word He speaks is God's words because God's in the flesh. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. If Yeshua or Jesus wasn't God, you show me one place where Yeshua ever said, thus saith the Lord and said something. He never said it, all right? He just spoke. He never said, thus saith Yehovah. Why? All the pro- if he was just a prophet, wouldn't he say, prefix it, thus saith Jehovah. Hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord. He never said it. He just spoke it. 
So what's he saying? He's talking about his father because he's in the form of a man. He humbled himself and became a man for the suffering of death. People get confused of who Yeshua is. We worship God. We don't worship two gods. The, what's the first commandment? Shemai Israel, Yehovah, Yehovah, your God, your Elohim, is Achad, one Yehovah. Your Yehovah is one Yehovah. Notice the terminology there. He says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued. Again, he says it, with power. And it was preached just a month or two ago, excusia, excusia in the Greek, with power from on high. All right? From on high. And just remember that. All right? Turn to Isaiah 42.11. You can kind of put a bookmark there where we're just at. Isaiah chapter 42. And this should be familiar because we read, we've been reading this verse a couple times, less, maybe a couple Sabbaths. Isaiah chapter 42. And I want to go back and look at these verses again. Isaiah 42, 1, it says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. This is speaking about Yeshua. All right? This is speaking about himself. Notice what he says. He says, I have put my spirit, my ruach, upon him. Upon him. Same term. Just like he says here in Luke chapter 24. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. What's upon the servant? What's upon Yeshua? I have put my spirit upon him. Simple, right? Let's keep going. Then he says here back in Isaiah 42 verse 2. It says, He shall not cry, nor lift up, his, lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. And a smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the owl shall wait for his law or his Torah. Alright? He makes the Torah honorable. And I talked about the spirit of judgment a couple Sabbaths ago. And I preached just on Isaiah 42. So I'm go- I went back with Luke chapter 24 and previously... Isaiah chapter 42. Alright, let's turn to John chapter 17. The Gospel of John chapter 17. Remember Yeshua. What's He called? Yeshua Christ. Jesus Christ. What is Christ? means anointed. He's called the Messiah, the Mashiach, all right? He's anointed, anointed with the Spirit. The same promise given to to the the disciples or the apostles in Luke uh, 24. Here in Gospel of John chapter 17, listen to what Yeshua says in verse 17. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Okay? As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. How was Yeshua sent into the world? We read there in Isaiah 42. Behold my servant, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I will put my spirit upon him. And he shall shall bring forth judgment unto the Gentiles. 
Okay? How did Yeshua, how did the Father send Yeshua? Yeshua says, as thou hast sent me into the world. How was Yeshua sent? He sent with the Holy Spirit upon him. Upon him. Okay? Even so have I also sent them into the world. So what's Yeshua saying in Luke 24? And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yeshua was, even His enemy says, they cannot speak against the miracles. Yeshua says, if you don't believe my word, believe me for the work's sake. For they testify of me. Yeshua had power to perform miracles. Yeshua taught, and they said about him, He's not as the scribes, for he taught them as one having power. Okay? And not as the scribes. How did Yeshua, how was Yeshua sent forth? With power. How? With the Holy Spirit was upon him. And Yeshua is saying there in John, Even as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Then he tells them in Luke, we call it the Great Commission, But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. In other words, don't go out and preach. Don't start to do my ministry, my works that I'm going to command you to do. Until you give in power. Because you're not going to be able to do it. Okay? Plain and simple. You cannot do it without power from on high. Alright? Let's keep going. Even as I have also sent them into the world. So last Sabbath we read Acts chapter 2. And I said Luke chapter 24 and Acts chapter 2 are one continue, continuation. So let's go to Acts chapter 2. We read this last Sabbath. We've read this many times. And I'm going to bring your attention to the day of Pentecost. Because everything that Yeshua does, both old, old and new, both old and new, is one gospel, one faith. It's all continuous. Alright? When Jehovah commanded Moses... When you come into the promised land, that take the great stones, all right, and plaster them, set them up, plaster them, and write all the words of this law, all the words of this Torah very plainly. That was in Exodus or Deuteronomy. That wasn't fulfilled till later by Joshua. Okay? Some of the things that you were started are fulfilled later. Okay? Luke chapter 24, he said to wait. So you're going to wait the 50 days. Okay? It's fulfilled here in Acts chapter 2. Alright? But there's more being fulfilled here than just another feast day. It's, it's all telling you something more. It's all part of the gospel. Alright? Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Notice, and I preached this last year, by the way, at Pentecost. I don't know if it's recorded, but... I, I preached it on the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost, the 50th day, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. One accord. One like accord. When you strike a chord, they were all with one accord. They are so unified. There is so much oneness in the Holy Spirit. They're with one accord. Alright? Alright? They're achad. They're one. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind with one accord in one place. Okay? And now the mighty wind comes in and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And remember that. A cloven tongue as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. This is where it occurred. Because they're, they obeyed what Yeshua told them to wait in Jerusalem. And they're there. And I believe they're in a special place where I'm going to get into here shortly. But notice when the Holy Spirit comes, there appears unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. All right? Fire in the temple, we're going to talk about it, required oil. Okay? It required oil to light it. Okay? To power the candlestick, you need oil. You have to have the oil. Right? You're going to remember all these key words. I'm going to keep remembering this. Remember, it's the day of Pentecost, the day of first fruits. It's the ingathering of the tithes. Okay? All of this is showing you something. All right? Yeshua. All right, turn to Matthew chapter 3. When Yeshua says, As thou hast sent me, how was Yeshua sent? All right, let's go back and cover the sequence of how Yeshua was sent because we're sent the same way. We have to wait for the power. And here in Matthew chapter 3, and we'll just start in verse 13. How does Yeshua start? How was He sent into the world? Verse 13 of Matthew chapter 3 says, Then cometh Yeshua from Galilee into jo to Jordan unto John to be baptized of Him. Okay? He starts off with the baptism. Okay? In baptism, there's a reason for baptism. Okay? There's a reason for the washing of the flesh. Go back and read the Torah. Go read the law. Go read the mitzvah, the commandments. All of this, one story, one gospel, all written about Yeshua. All of it is for a purpose. Okay? Everything is there. Everything builds upon. We've been laying the foundation. It's a stone. Why is it a stone? Because the foundation doesn't move. You dig deep. You make it a rock. It's hard. It's a stone. It never changes. Why? Because that's the foundation. It's not supposed to wave here. You're not supposed to change. You're not supposed to drift. You continue. You lay the foundation. It's a stone. And I'm going to get into shortly. We're getting started. Jacob, what did he do to the stone? He set it up for a pillar. What did he do? He put oil on it. I preach this many times, and the Holy Spirit keeps coming back to it. Why did he put oil on the stone? Okay? There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. Here, Yeshua, he's baptized of John. Verse 14, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Yeshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Yeshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, listen, the heavens were opened. The heavens themselves were opened. Remember that. Remember that. Unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting, and look at that word, upon him. Isaiah 42, and I will pour my Spirit upon him, in whom my soul delighteth. Right? And then look at the next verse. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 
he delighted in him. That's a fulfillment to the jotting tittle of Isaiah 42. Okay? And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom my soul delighteth in. I will pour my spirit upon him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Okay? Look at the next chapter, chapter 4. Then was Yeshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right? So how was Yeshua sent? Baptism endued with power from on high. Okay? Then he had, there's a time of 40 days. There's some time. In verse 2, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. So now he's tempted. And I preached this maybe months ago, where when Satan tells him, go and make these stones bread, okay? What did Yeshua say? Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. All right? Then he goes out, and let me find the verse. Verse 17, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Okay? Actually, let's, let's go up to verse 12. Now, when Yeshua heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in, Ca- in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. The beginning of his ministry. Verse 17. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Even as, I, even as thou sent me into, into the world, so I send them. Have I sent them into the world. Alright? Notice the sequence. Yeshua was baptized. He's endued with power, all right? And then he starts his uh, ministry. And I preached this last week or a week before, the apostles' doctrine. I think it was last Sabbath, all right? What, were they, what was Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost? Repentance for the remission of sins, right? On the day of Pentecost. What was, uh, what was Paul, what Paul doing? Let's turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 or 37. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua, Mashiach, or, uh, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Notice, it's a gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did He testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward or perverse generation. Alright? And they, they that gladly received His word were baptized. Alright? We read that verse. So Yeshua starts to preach. From that time, Yeshua began to preach and to say, Matthew 4, 17, and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then I read last Sabbath, Acts chapter 20. Let's go there real quick. Acts chapter 20, verse 17. And this is the Apostle Paul uh, saying this. And from Miletius he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church 
And when they were come to him, he sent unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith to our Lord Yeshua Christ. All right. What's Paul preaching towards the end of his ministry? The same foundation, repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Yeshua. All right. Messiah. He never changed. That's the gospel. But before repentance is preached, what were the apostles told to wait to do? They were told to wait in the city of Jerusalem. Okay? A specific city. In the city of Jerusalem. And ye shall be endued with power from on high. Why Jerusalem? Alright? Turn to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. What was so special about Jerusalem? Acts chapter 7, this is where the Apostle Stephen, a man full of the Holy Spirit, towards the end of his sermon, let's just skip to verse 43. It says, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, Figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with, it's Joshua, it says Jesus, but it's Joshua, into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and listened to what David did and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. Okay? But Solomon built him an house. So what's so special about Jerusalem? It's where David brought the tabernacle. And temporarily, the tabernacle was in Jerusalem until the Solomon built the temple. Okay? So, what's so special about Jerusalem? Why did Yeshua say, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high? Because the temple was there. And why is it so special for them to wait in that city. Okay. Verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. As saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne. And earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Saith Jehovah. Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And what is Jerusalem? Yah-ru-salam. The place that Yah puts His rest, puts His peace. Okay? That's the significance of Jerusalem. Right? And we talked about the temple not made with hands. The Apostle Paul says it's not of this building. Okay? Not of this catesis. It's not of this creation. Okay? That's what he told David. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Jehovah's house is not of this catesis. It's not of this building. It's not of this creation. No eye hath seen, no ear heard the things that Jehovah hath prepared for them that love Him. It's unimaginable. It's beyond creation. No man's seen it. Alright? So they're in Jerusalem and they're waiting They're in one place. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4. They're in one place. With one accord. And go back to Acts chapter 2. Let me read. Verse 4. 
I'm sorry, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Okay? It filled, it filled, it filled all the house. Okay? It's the day of Pentecost. What's the day of Pentecost? It's the day of ingathering. It's the day of first fruits. Okay, I'm going to show you some other verses. Okay. The temple, when David built it and Solomon built it, had rooms. You call them little houses. And in those rooms, the storehouses, they would bring the tithes in. Remember, this is Pentecost. It's not by coincidence. All this is a reason, like I said. Nothing is to be looked over. Nothing is just, it's just some city, who cares? Blah, blah, blah. It's a day of Pentecost, whatever. No. The, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, okay, it's to the exact millisecond. It's to the exact purpose, the exact design, the exact shadow and figure of the truth. Alright? And it filled all the house. When you use the storehouse, it becomes empty. Then you have to refill it. One of the things they used to have to bring in, they'd bring in the grains, they'd bring in the first fruits. What else did they bring into the storehouse? They brought the oil in. The temple service, I don't have all the verses, but go study the law. Go study Moses. Go study how many, I forgot the, the units they used, kins of oil they, they had to bring in. Not just some one gallon jug. I'm talking, they had to store rooms full of this, full of oil, full of jugs. It had to be full. They had to refill it. And one of the days they refilled it, three times in the year, Jehovah says, all your males shall appear before me, and they cannot come empty-handed. They cannot come empty. In other words, don't bring me an empty vessel. You got to come with oil, and you got to bring, you got to fill the house. So this is the day of Pentecost, and it, the Holy Spirit comes down, and it fills all the house. Okay? It filled all the house. And what happens? It filled all the house where they were sitting. They were in one place. And if you know how I preach, I preach on places. I preach on geography. Okay? It's specific. Why does it say? Why did Jacob, when he anoints the oil, he was in a certain place. It says four times, a certain place, a, a place, a certain place. Over and over it tells you a certain place was Jacob. This is Bethel. It's a certain place. Why, why would the scripture be so redundant? Why is here in book of Acts, it says, and it filled. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And like I said earlier, to have the candlestick, one of the commandments for lighting the candlestick, we're going to get into the verses, was to have oil. Okay? Let's keep going. Turn to Malachi chapter 3. The book of Malachi chapter 3. Let's just start in verse, verse 1. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. It's John the Baptist. And then he says, And Adon, which is Yeshua, 
whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith Jehovah Sabaoth. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And what did John the Baptist testify of Yeshua? Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will baptize you with fire. What's the day of Pentecost? They were baptized with fire. Okay? Cloven tongues of fire appeared on each one of them. This is a fulfillment of Malachi Chapter 3, verse 2. But who may abide the day of His coming, and who shall stand when He appears? For He is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Takes a lot of heat for that. And He shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto Jehovah an offering in righteousness. Okay? Remember that verse. I preached on what the sons of Levi are type of. The sons of Levi, the priesthood, are type of the New Testament saints. Okay? That's clear in the Scripture. It's the pattern of us. Okay? Verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto Jehovah, as in the days of old, as in the former years. And I will come near to you to judgment. Remember Isaiah 42.1. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And I will come near to you to judgment. Yeshua came and spoke judgment. He spoke judgment upon the scribes and Pharisees. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Alright? And I will come near to you in judgment and will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith Jehovah Tzavoth, for I am Jehovah, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me. What is that? Repent. Repent. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith Jehovah Tzavoth. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Okay? Verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Okay? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Where? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat or food in mine house. And prove me now, therefore, there herewith saith Jehovah Sebaoth, if I will not open to you, listen to that verse again. I didn't even see it till now. If I will not open, not open you the windows of heaven, heaven's open. Just like the Apostle Stephen, just like the day of Pentecost, just like Jacob, when he saw heaven opened, he says, This is the gate of God, this is the gate of heaven. He saw heaven open, and who was there? Jehovah stood upon it. Beth El. Okay, remember that. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. All right? But notice that verse, verse 10. says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in mine house. In God's house, There are storehouses, but it's all one house. 
You guys understand that? It's all one house. Though there's a storehouse, he says it's mine house, singular. All right? And like I explained to you, and I'm going to show you all the verses. The, store, the storehouses that they built in the temple, go look at pictures of it. Go, go study it. They had storehouses all around the temple. And in these storehouses, it was at the house of God or Bethel, okay? The temple itself, where the candlestick was, the holy place and the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant, they had storehouses. But Jehovah's saying, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there be meat, meat in mine house. The storehouse is part of the house, it's part of the temple. The storehouse or Uts, Uts is part of the Bayit, the Beth. All right? Turn to Exodus chapter 27. Exodus chapter 27. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 9. This is going to give you a little bit of a, an idea of how the, how the tabernacle was built and the temple was based on the pattern of the tabernacle. This, the, all right? The tabernacle here, it has a court. It has the gates. Same thing as the temple. It has a court. has the gates. has the center temple, the center house. All right? Everything that is described here is the way that the, the temple or the house of God in Jerusalem was built. Exodus chapter 27 verse 9 says, And thou shalt make the court of the tabernacle for the south side southward. There shall be hangings for the court of fine twined linen of a hundred cubits long for one side. Okay? 300 feet. I'd say a cubit's like three feet or something like that. Verse 10 and the 20 pillars, notice the word pillars, okay? And the 20 pillars thereof, and their 20 sockets shall be of brass, and the hooks of the pillars and their fillets, fillets shall be of silver. And likewise for the north side and the link there shall be hangings of 100 cubits long, and its 20 pillars and their 20 sockets of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and for the breadth of the court on the west side shall be hangings of 50 cubits, their pillars 10 and their sockets 10. And the breadth of the court on the east side eastward shall be 50 cubits. The hangings of one side and of the gate shall be 15 cubits, their pillars 3 and their sockets 3. And on the other side shall be hangings 15 cubits, their pillars 3 and their sockets 3. And for the gate of the court shall be a hanging of 20 cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework and, the, and their pillars there shall be four and their sockets four. All the pillars round about the court shall be filleted with silver. Their hooks shall be of silver and their sockets of brass. All right. Let me keep going to find the verse. All right. A couple more verses. Verse 18. The length of the court shall be a hundred cubits and the breadth fifty Everywhere in the height, five cubits of fine twined linen and their sockets of brass. All the vessels of the tabernacle and all the service thereof and all the pins thereof and all the pins of the court shall be of brass. Look at verse 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn Always. Okay? What were they commanded to bring? That they bring thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil which is before the testimony. Aaron and his son shall order it from evening to morning before Jehovah. It shall be a statute forever. Unto their generation on behalf of the children of Israel. Alright? They're commanded to bring oil. Why? To cause the lamp 
to burn always. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. The lamps were commanded as an ordinance to burn always. Always. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll just look at a couple of verses. Verse 16. He says, Rejoice evermore or always. Pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Yeshua concerning you look at verse 19 quench not the spirit despise not prophesying prove all things hold fast that which is good abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Look at verse 19. Quench not the spirit. Don't let the lamp go out, that it may burn that will the olive oil to cause the lamp to burn always. Always. Alright? Turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Listen to this parable. To what Yeshua says. Matthew chapter 25. And let's look at verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with unto him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Notice this parable about the oil for the lamp, and they didn't have enough to light it. They weren't doing, keeping spiritually keeping the ties bringing in the oil quenching they quenched the spirit all right they put it out they never brought in the oil into the storehouses like malachi says in exodus 27 says and thou shalt command the children of israel that they bring the pure oil olive beaten for the light beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always all right for our oil, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. The oil of the tithes were gathered into the storehouses, the temple. All right? Malachi 3, verse 1. All right? Let's go back there. All right, I already read it, but it says there in verse 1 Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And Adon, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, he, he shall come, saith Jehovah Tzaboth. The temple was built, okay? When David went to prepare for the temple, he built it on the threshing floor of Ornan, or Onan, okay? He went and he bought it 
from Ornan. He says, on this threshing floor, I'm going to build the temple that's in Jerusalem. Okay? He bought it from him. He says, I'm not going to offer nothing that is free. He bought it. Because every offering is going to have to cost you. It costs money. 10% is a value. It cost him. He bought the threshing floor of Ornan. What's a threshing floor? It's for grain. It's for sifting the wheat. Okay? What did Yeshua give a parable? We read some of the prophecies. He will thoroughly purge his floor. He's like a fuller soap. He's going to divide the, the, the wheat and the chaff, the sheep and the goats. It's a threshing floor. But what's it also? What's the material of it? It's a stone. Okay? The temple's built on the stone. What do they bring into the temple storehouses? They bring the oil. What is the prophecies? We started this last year. What was the one verse we started with? Behold, I lay in Zion a chief corner stone. That's where this whole message is started from. Behold, I lay in Zion, in Jerusalem, a chief corner stone. What does it say? He that stumbleth on the stone shall be ground to powder. It's a threshing floor. It's not all by coincidence. It's all not by chance. These are, this is the gospel. Believe it or not, that was a, the gospel. What did Yeshua say? If you believe not Moses, for Moses wrote of me. Everything you read in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, whatever Moses wrote, whatever the prophets said, whatever the Psalms say, Yeshua says, it, they wrote of me. Everything. Even when David bought the threshing floor of Ornan, it was the gospel. It was about Yeshua. When Jacob sets up the pillar, the stone for a pillar, and puts oil upon it, it is about Yeshua. Everything is. Unless you call Yeshua a liar. For they, the law and the prophets and the Psalms, they wrote of me. And if you believe not their words, how are you going to believe my words? That's the foundation. Go back to the foundation. It's been laid. Everything's, everything's there. Remember Luke 24, right before he sends a promise. What did it say? It says, Then he opened, then opened he their understanding that they might know the scriptures. Thus it behooved Messiah to suffer and die and to rise the third day. How, where do you get that from? You get it from the Old Testament scriptures. You have your understanding's open. You get power from on high. What is this power? He says the comforter. And when the comforter is come, what does the comforter do? He will give that which is of mine and shall show it unto you. For he'll receive of mine and show it unto you. And he'll guide you into all truth. And he'll show you things to come. He'll open your understanding. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's where you get power. Alright? Keep, let's keep going. The temple was built on the threshing floor of Ornan. Okay? Turn to Genesis chapter 28. We've been talking about it. Let's go read it. Genesis chapter 28. Listen to this verses and then I want to make a point on what Jacob says. Okay? And it all, all ties in like this. All of it. That's the gospel. Genesis chapter 28, verse 16. Actually, let's start earlier. Start in verse 10. 
Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he laid it upon, listen, I've said this again and again, a certain place. And tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, that certain place, and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Specific, over and over, the place, the place, that place, a certain place. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Remember the calling of that one disciple? Forgot his name. But he saw, he says, I know thee, I saw thee under the tree. And he marveled that he knew him. He said, here on truly is an Israeli, in him there is no guile. He, he says, this person, there's no, there's no deceivement in this person. He's a pure, honest person. I forgot his name. Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Okay? He says, for I saw thee under the tree. Alright? And Yeshua says, marvel not that I said this, but, but ye shall see greater things than these. Ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Okay? He says the angels of God are going to descend, ascend and descend upon the, the Son of Man. So here Jacob sees the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, listen to verse 13. It says, and behold, Jehovah stood above it. Okay? Remember we started out in these verses. Okay? We start off in Luke 24, 44 to 47. It says, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So here, there's a ladder set up and it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, verse 13, Jehovah stood above it. He stands above it and said, I am Jehovah Elohim of Abraham thy father and the Elohim of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And the seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. What does Yeshua say? Towards the end of Matthew or one of the other Gospels. He says, And behold, I am with thee even unto the end of the world. The end of the ion. What's he telling Jacob here? And behold, verse 15, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places where thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. That's going to be our last day. We're going to be Exodus. We're going to be gathered again to the Jordan. And when you cross Jordan, it's like I said it before, you're crossing a gate. Why is, why is it the same place that the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River where they're commanded to take stones? And what did, what did John the Baptist say? He's in the exact same place that the children of Israel crossed and were baptized. The exact same place John the Baptist is appearing, preaching repentance, and they're crossing the Jordan River. And there are stones there. And what did John the Baptist say? He says, And say not within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For verily I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children, the seed unto Abraham. Jacob is the seed of Isaac, who is the seed of Abraham, to whom the promises were given. Alright? And what is the promise to Jacob? 
Behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee, I will protect thee. Look at verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely Jehovah is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Okay? The gate of heaven. Heaven opened up on the day of Pentecost. In the day Yeshua was baptized, heaven, heaven opened up and the Holy Spirit came down like a dove upon Yeshua. The day of Pentecost, heaven opened up, heaven opened up, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. Okay? Here Jacob, heaven opens up, he calls it the gate of heaven. This is, none, uh, this is a dreadful place. This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. He says there in verse 13, And behold, Jehovah stood above it. What's going on here? We know, I'm going to say what's going on by what Jacob does. Okay? What happens to Jacob? Look what he does. Jehovah is above him. Verse 18, And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Kind of like he got saved that day. Okay? How do you know? He's doing something in the physical that he got spiritually. The Holy Spirit came upon him. So now he's doing something prophetically. Look at what he's doing. He's declaring to you the Messiah. He's called the Stone of Israel. Right? I read that to you in Genesis. Towards the end of his life. Try to find it. I think it's Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Verse 24. But his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong. By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd. The stone of Israel. Jacob is telling you. The shepherd. What's he called? What's Yeshua called? What did Yeshua say about himself? I am the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Right? And I know my sheep. And my sheep know my voice. Right? From thence is the shepherd. So here Jacob, before Yeshua came, he already knows that he's the shepherd. Right? Then he calls him the stone of Israel. Earlier in his life, whether he knew it or he didn't know it, all Moses records what Jacob did. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Yeshua Messiah, the Christ, the anointed. Okay? Then look what he does. And he called the name of that place Bethel. He calls it the house of God. Bait El. House El. God. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob, he vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in the way, this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Okay, the Father's house is in Zion. Jerusalem's the Father's house. It's a shadow of heavenly Zion. Then shall Jehovah be my God. Verse 22, And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. There's your tithes. Now it ties, it ties, ties into Pentecost. It ties into the oil, to what happened. All of it's part of the gospel. All right? Jacob anoints the stone that he set up for a pillar. All right? Luke 24, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Jacob pours oil It says there in the end of verse 18, And set up for a pillar, 
and poured oil, listen to that word again, upon the top of it. You see, all the time you read the word upon, all right, it's all telling you the mighty rushing wind, it comes down upon them in the day of Pentecost. What is this day? Yeshua says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. It's, it's telling you, all right? Where would the tithes be brought? Jacob vows to pay tithes. Where would it end up the tithes to be brought? To the storehouses of the temple. Okay? The storehouses of the temple is where all of the tithes, including the oil, was to be brought. Bethel is God's house. The temple was the house of God. What Jacob did was prophetic. All right? And we just read Genesis 49.22. He's called the shepherd of Israel, the stone of Israel. All right? Turn to Exodus chapter 29. What's the significance of the oil being upon the stone? What's, what, what does it mean? Turn to Exodus chapter 29. Start in verse 1. Alright? Verse 1. And this is a thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to sanctify them. We read that verse. And I pray that your whole soul, body, and spirit is preserved blameless until the day of His coming. That was 1 Thessalonians. Your whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless unto His coming. Faithful is He that calleth you who also will do it. Remember that Yeshua is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. Remember that when when Moses was setting up Aaron and his sons, he's going to, here's the commandment for it. We're going to read it. If Aaron was the high priest, who anointed the high priest? There has to be someone before him, someone higher than him. Who was higher than him? Moses. Moses was the one that took the blood and put it on Aaron's ear and put it on his big toe. Moses is the one that we're going to read that put the oil on his head. So who is Moses? He's a greater than Aaron. And who is Yeshua? He's a greater than Abraham. He's a greater than Moses. For Moses wrote of me. Yeshua didn't write of Moses. Moses wrote of him. And what happens? What, what did you, Moses say? A prophet shall Jehovah Elohim raise unto you like unto me. Him shall you hear. He's greater than me. What did John say? I have need to be baptized of thee. He said, suffer it now to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, we're keeping Torah, John. And I, Yeshua kept the law to the tittle. And it was required for a priest before he does serve it to be washed. Suffer that all righteousness be fulfilled. And so it's fulfilled. Alright? He says here in Exodus chapter 29, And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them, to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish. Remember, this is what they have to do before the service. Before this, you can serve Jehovah, you have to do this. Verse 2, And unleavened bread and cakes, and unleavened, temp and unleavened tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened anointed with oil, of wheat and flour shalt thou make them, and thou shalt put them into one basket, 
and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his son shall bring, shall thou bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. What does the Yeshua do before he starts the minister? He's baptized. Why? He's entering service. He's becoming hallowed. He's becoming sanctified. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod. There's some stones on that ephod. Twelve stones. And the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Listen to those words. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon, upon his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles. And Aaron and his son and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statue. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. They're consecrated. They're hallowed with the oil. Alright? The oil that is given is pointing you what Pentecost is all about. Without the oil being completed, they couldn't be hallowed. It's for the anointing. Even as Yeshua says, you sent me into the world, so have I sent them also into the world. How did Yeshua come? How did Messiah come? Why is He called Messiah? Why is He called the Anointed One? Why is He called Christ, because he's anointed. They knew who he was. They knew they expected him. All right. They poured oil, and Aaron his sons shalt thou bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. It's a specific place. It's near the door of the tabernacle. Okay. All the storehouses faced the tabernacle. All of it surrounded it. You got rooms, rooms, rooms. All of it. Face the door of the tabernacle. All of it. Right? So where are they on the day of Pentecost? They're in the house. Where is this house? It's in Jerusalem. What happens the day of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit falls upon each of them and it fills all the house. I said that in Malachi that, that my storehouses might be full, that my house might be full. It's all one house. Right? Considered one house. What, what happens to them? The priests, the sons of Aaron, they're washed with water. It's baptism. Then in verse 7, what happens? Thou shalt anoint, thou shalt, then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head. Alright? Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. We've, we've read this verse many times. But, but listen to what he's saying now. Go back. We started out with this verse last year. 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's go back now. After learning what we've learned. And read this verse again. 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 4 says, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yeshua Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, 
even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they also were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, listen, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The light out of Zebulun and Naphtali, a light has shined that bring the oil olive beaten for the lamp that my lamp may burn always, always. The day of Pentecost came, its power from on high to anoint Yeshua's apostles so they can go out and preach the gospel. Turn to Psalm chapter 68. Psalm chapter 68. Verse 15. says, The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan, and high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desired to dwell in, Yea, Jehovah will dwell in it forever. He's the chosen stone. For I lay in Zion a cheap cornerstone. This is the hill which God desired to dwell in. Yea, Jehovah will dwell in it forever. What hill? It's called Mount Zion. Alright? At Pentecost which is one of the three main feasts, Pentecost, the first fruits, all the tithes were to be brought into the storehouses. The oil is brought, and the oil is poured abundantly upon the congregation. All right? This is the power from on high. This is the spiritual blessings that is poured upon them. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And read what the Apostle John says. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 24. It says, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him, abideth in you. And ye ye not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now little children abide in him, and when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Alright? Notice John says, But the anointing which ye have received of him abide in you. It's poured upon you, but it's also in you. The Holy Spirit's also in you. Alright? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, I just thank you for today. I just thank you, Jehovah, for your, your anointing, your Holy Spirit, Jehovah, that it's the power from on high, and without your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. Unless we abide in you and in the branch, we are cast forth and we're dried and we wither, Jehovah. And I pray for your anointing, a fresh anointing. I pray that you fill us, Jehovah, with oil, that our house may be full. And I pray, Yeshua, Mashiach, that you, you help us to 
continue to nurture and to grow in thee and to bring the, to bring the first fruits, to bring in the tithes and to continue to grow, Jehovah. And I pray for this coming of Passover, Jehovah, that we may be worthy of your body and your blood. And I pray, Yeshua Mashiach, that you just help each one of us to grow in thee, help us to bless each other, help your Holy Spirit to flow out of us and to use the gifts of the Spirit according for the edifying of ourselves, the church, the ecclesia. And I pray you bless the fellowship today and, and everything that's said and done. Yeshua Mashiach, I pray in thy precious name. So be it. Amen.